We're here in the same spot we were the first part of June when we were here the last time. Uh, you can see how the crop has grown. Uh, before it was about three or four inches high, and now it's up to my knees. Uh, we've contributed that to a good part of uh, the summer. It's the first part of September. We're out here this morning looking. Uh, we've had great weather this year. We've had uh, a little bit of rain and lots of warm days and cool nights and uh, an abundance of uh, irrigating water this year so that the crop has really progressed nicely and you can see that it's almost up to my knees and the roots have gotten pretty good size. I, I think I'll pull one out and show you how big they've gotten. It's hard to believe that that was just a seed the first part of March and now this has turned into a nice about a two and a half pound root. Uh, probably about a teaspoon of sugar out of that thing right here. As we have talked about earlier this, uh, when we were planting and things like that, uh, the snowpack was accumulating in the mountains and that was from the storms that uh, dropped the snow. It's the same snow that everybody skis on. Uh, once that snow quits falling, uh, the weather warms up, the snow melts in the spring after it's fallen all winter long. Uh, from there it is channeled through a elaborate system of ditches and reservoirs and lakes and man-made structures that uh, catch that water so that we can use it again. Uh, we have kind of a saying, once it goes past you, you can't use it again because uh, it's just gone. It's down to somebody else's thing. The water, it's hard to believe that this same water ends up in the Mississippi down in New Orleans in the Gulf of Mexico. It's a great system that uh, how the water all is all eventually diverted to different spots. The ditches are controlled by a company. Each ditch company has its own people that uh, check the water and regulate the water and issue the water to each individual farmer. I call in a day in advance and order my water uh, so that uh, they know that I know it's coming and they know how much water to put into the ditch so that we don't waste any. That way only what is used is sent out of each lake. So from there it's used by gravity down to uh, each checkpoint where it's diverted out of that. Uh, gravity usually takes the majority of the work to get the water there but sometimes it has to be pumped uh, into places where it's higher than the ditch and then uh, it's diverted either into a ditch system or into a irrigation sprinkler system, very similar to how sprinkler systems work in yards except that it's on a big scale that covers 160 acres and it moves in a circle. They call it a center pivot irrigation. Uh, that's the two types of irrigation that's uh, most common is the furrow irrigation like we're doing here and the center pivot irrigation. So let's uh, go over there and see where the water is coming out of the, uh, the pipe where it's been diverted from the big ditch and show you how we're going to set tubes and uh, use furrow irrigation. We're moving tubes from one set to another. I pick them up and where we've already irrigated the previous 12 hours and I'm going to lay them out where we're going to irrigate this morning. We're putting two tubes in every row because the row length is long and it takes a lot of water to get to the bottom and that's our goal is to get this water clear to the bottom end by in 12 hours so we have to kind of push a little extra water down there to get them to the bottom because the ground is taking the water and, and soaking it in this is a right here a drop dam canvas. It's an adjustable canvas that we can use to regulate the height of the water. I'm going to start setting tubes. They're a siphon tube. It siphons the water out of the main ditch down to each individual row. This is a siphon tube. It comes in different diameters to correlate to the amount of water that you want to come out of each tube. They range anywhere from a half inch diameter. This is an inch and a quarter up to six inches. So you can see that uh, with these tubes you can regulate the amount of water that each row gets. We stick it in the water until the water gets 
over half full. When the water fills up to about here, I put my hand over the end and seal it tight. And then I pull it out and it's just like a uh, straw. It sucks the water out of the ditch into the, the tube because the water level here is lower than the water level in the ditch. It'll just keep siphoning. You can do the same thing with a bucket of water and a hose. Stick the siphon in the water over half. I put my hand over the end to seal it. And as long as the water in the ditch here is higher than here, that tube will run continuously. So I do it again. This is my dad. We worked together on this farm. He taught me everything I need to know about irrigating. Uh, he's been farming for about 45 years now. And this is how he started setting tubes. Uh, the first thing you learn as a kid on a farm is how to set tubes. So that's a job that uh, the kids all get to do on the farming operation. Uh, Dad puts the drop dam canvases in and we all, the rest of us all set tubes and move tubes. Okay, you can see how the water where we sat last night 12 hours ago has made this ground wet. And that's the purpose of irrigation is to wet that ground up. Uh, the water goes down between each row of the beets and then capillary action actually pulls the water towards this, the beets. Just, that's just the nature's way of equalizing the water out. So the water has went clear to the bottom end. And uh, like I say, this is where we sat last night or 12 hours ago. And we're doing it this morning to pick up and move the water to the next set so we don't get it too wet. And uh, this should last about uh, two weeks between we have to be, before we have to irrigate again. This is the point where the water enters the field. It's come from a ditch that's been diverted from a lake. Uh, just our point of entry where the water enters. Uh, each farm has a different source of where the water enters and you just have to uh, fit the need of the field and the lay of the land to where the water enters the field. So that's why you'll see we have an open ditch on one way and gated pipe going the other. This is what we call gated pipe. It's used where a surface irrigation ditch would be hard and a lot, require a lot of labor to fix because it would take a lot of those drop dams because it'd be fast or places where the water would wash and cause erosion. So we use gated pipe and it's just a piece of uh, either plastic or aluminum pipe that had these little gates put in there. Okay, these are the little gates that open and close and allow the water to come out of the pipe. There's a plug on the end of that so it builds pressure just like you're in your water lines. And there's a little gate inside that opens and closes that regulates the amount of water that comes out of each gate. And like I say, what we do is it lays towards the field. I've got it set up this year right now for demonstration purposes. But it lays flat like that. And then I put this sock on each gate to control the erosion. It goes down to the bottom of each ditch that's ditched to the field and uh, creates a nice steady stream of water instead of a rushing pool where it would wash and uh, cause erosion. You can see this water has only been running for about five minutes now and how the soil has already started getting wet. It's just like it's wicking the water away from that source of water out to where the, the roots of the beets are and the crops.